All right, so hi everyone. Um, I'm Jonathan Balkin here from Princeton University, and I'm representing my research group, which is led by Professor David Wenslaff. Um, and I'm going to be talking about our Open Python plus Ariane platform and how we run on Amazon F1 and make it available um, for you to use for software or firmware development in the cloud without needing risk v development boards. So this work is part of the uh, Decades project, um, which is funded under DARPA's Software Defined Hardware Program. And the goal of the program in general is building runtime reconfigurable hardware uh, to accelerate data intensive applications. And so um, we have a big focus in decades where we're trying to build a full stack system which boots, uh, boots Linux, has a large number of accelerators, and has what we call intelligent storage tiles to make more efficient uh, data movement in the system. And this is a collaboration between uh, our group, Professor Ronslav's group at Princeton, Professor Martinosi's group at Princeton, and Professor Luca Carloni, who you heard from earlier um, at Columbia. And the big thing here is that we make all of our tools uh, open source and available under permissive licenses like BSD and Apache. So Open Python plus Ariane uh, is a collaboration between ourselves at Princeton and uh, the pulp team at ETH Zurich. And essentially, we want to build a permissively licensed uh, Linux-capable mini-core research platform which uses the RISC-V ISA. And so uh, at ETH, they developed the Ariane core, and we saw them at a RISC-V workshop give a presentation, and at the end they said, oh, we want to do multi-core, but we're not sure how to do it. And we had an open source platform called Open Python, and so we got in touch with them, and we said, hey, we could make a really cool uh, many-core RISC-V platform. Um, and so we started that collaboration. And because these were both mature and extensible designs, we were able to bring the core and the many-core platform together. Within about six months, we were booting SMP Linux, and it was the first open source SMP Linux booting RISC-V many core. So Ariane itself, um, you may have heard of already, it's being used in a large number of uh, uh, projects at the moment, is an application class processor. It's written in system Verilog. Uh, in my opinion, the RTL is very uh, elegant and easy to read. Um, and it was designed to be Linux capable. It was designed uh, specifically to boot Linux, but it can boot other Unices as well. Um, and it's got all that you need to do that. So it's got the L1 caches you need, it's got the privilege modes, TLBs, and so on. Um, and it really is designed for extensibility. Uh, we had a Google Summer of Code project this past summer, and our student within three months was able to build a new branch predictor and extend the core to be uh, dual issue core instead of a single issue core. Um, and that was you know, a newly graduated uh, undergraduate student who was able to do that. Uh, from our side, the Open Python platform um, is an open source many core research platform. Uh, we've been developing this for about six years at this point. Um, it's been uh, contributed to the open source hardware community for uh, about five, and it's written in Verilog RTL. Everything we write is in Verilog, and uh, everything we write comes under the BSD license. Um, the idea here is building an extreme scale many core, um, which is still OS capable, and so uh, we have a cache coherence system that we call PMesh, which can scale up to half a billion cores, and we provide a lot of configurability options so that you can choose uh, to enable or disable certain features or change the size of structures um, in order to test a research idea at multiple design points and figure out where the optimal point is um, for your design. Um, our RTL has been around for quite a long time, and as a result, we support a variety of different tools, both in simulation and uh, for kind of backend and census and so on. Um, and I have an asterisk here for Riviera support. This week, we got a PR from the developers of the Riviera simulator, and they had just implemented all the support and submitted it as a PR to us, and so that's now upstream um, in Open Python. Um, another important part here is it's all been verified for ASIC, and we've done a very thorough characterization and released all that characterization data open source at openpython.org. So you can go and see real data from real chip that we taped out, 25 core, many core, um, and you know, use that for furthering your research. Um, but also just uh, you know, in terms of philosophy, we want to make as much open as we possibly can. Um, and the chips that we have are back in the lab and they boot uh, Debian Linux, which is pretty great as well. So uh, Open Python plus Ariane is a tiled many core, and so um, you can see uh, single tile here, and on the left we have the Ariane core um, and its L1 caches, and on the right we have the PMesh cache system from Open Python, um, and we have our private uh, second level of cache, which is the L1.5. We've got our L2 cache, which is our LLC, and that's distributed and shared across all of the tiles in the system, and so there's a, a shard in each tile, and then we have our three knock routers, uh, which implement the PMesh cache coherence protocol. And so we started out with uh, the Spark ISA, and when we wanted to move to RISC-V by integrating Ariane, um, we had to 
make changes on both sides. And so on the Ariane side, they implemented a new cache subsystem that's specifically tailored to our cache interface. And then we, on our side, developed not only that cache interface to make it uh, better improved to work with Ariane, but we had to add the RISC-V atomics. And so those are all supported in a scalable way in our cache coherence system. And then once you've got your whole many core um, building up your chip, we also have the chipset, which is on the right-hand side here. And that's where all the peripherals live. It's where accelerators live at the moment. And it has things like the boot ROM, um, which is generated when you compile your design. And that includes the device tree so that you can go ahead and run Linux and run the same Linux image across a variety of different open Python designs. Um, we provide uh, the RISC-V debug spec uh, compliant uh, debug unit. And so you can actually use GDB, plug into the JTAG of your FPGA, and then use GDB to step through your Linux boot, which is pretty cool. Um, I was really impressed that this was actually possible. I didn't think that was possible before we did it. Um, and then we have all the kind of interrupt controllers and so on that you need. Um, in terms of configurability, we have a variety of parameters that you can configure, uh, plus more than you just see here. And Again, this is really about giving a variety of design points. People can design the chips that they want to design and come up with what the correct optimal point is for what they're trying to do. Um, and you can also see the bottom here, we have a variety of bootloading methods, include the uh, JTAG that I just mentioned. Um, in terms of FPGA prototyping, we support a variety of Xilinx FPGAs at the moment. And you know these vary in price and the number of cores you can get, the speed you can run at, and so on. Um, but the one that we're going to be talking about is Amazon F1. And the great thing about F1 is that you can rent it by the hour, and so you don't need uh, any infrastructure uh, on your local machine. And you know it costs, I don't know what it is in euros, it's about $1.60 an hour, um, and you can get up to about 15 cores here. So this is a lot more than you could get on kind of any uh, available board uh, that boots Linux today. And so if you want to do kind of check out how scalable your application is for RISC-V on a real multi-core system, you can do this and get good scaling. Um, so the reason that we did this is that we really care about making Open Python available uh, freely and open source. And so we want people who don't have FPGAs to be able to uh, use the platform. And that means, you know, hey, you don't have the thing in front of you in the desk. Uh, you don't have to go and spend the money to buy one. You don't need to buy Xilinx, uh, Vivado licenses, that sort of thing. Um, and we want it to make it available so you don't need to recompile the hardware too. So you can do this sort of software firmware development. And so F1 gives us this kind of uh, cloud rental. This is uh, a great step forward in that direction. Um, and you can do things like rebuild in the cloud. So when you're renting your, your uh, FPGA system from them, you don't need to buy a separate Xilinx license. It's all available for you on the system. Um, and so if you're kind of bursting in terms of you want to do a bunch of FPGAs at once, maybe you don't have the hardware for that, you can use this. Or if you just want something that's much lower cost than spending $8,000 on an ultra scale plus FPGA that you're getting here, then you can rent this for about $1.60 an hour. Um, another great thing here is that there's a repository of bit files um, for the FPGAs that are available. And so uh, we make available what they call them AGFIs. We make available an AGFI for a nine core uh, Open Python plus Ariane system. And this is really get great as an alternative real hardware uh, system. So if you want to do your software development, you want to test things out, um, you can do that using this without having to touch Vivado, without having to go and look at our RTL. You can just go on, grab that image, and get going. Um, now, if you do want to build uh, your own, uh, then we have uh, we try to make everything as push button as possible, and so you can run a single command and get back uh, a bit file on the other end, and then use that to program the FPGA in F1 um, or for other FPGAs. And in this case, you know it takes a few hours to uh, to, to generate this. Uh, the FPGA is really big; it's awesome, um, but it means it takes a while to do kind of uh, census place and route for it. Um, and you'll note here it produces a Xilinx design checkpoint. That then gets fed into uh, some other uh, system on Amazon in a queue, and you kind of wait in the post-process uh, to produce the final AGFI image. Um, you can run one core about 125 megahertz here. Um, this is you know, uh, reasonably uh, in line with uh, what the real hardware would be. Um, you know, it's maybe like 10x off or something like that. So for computer architects, that's like really close. Um, we're used to talking about simulation where you're running at you know, 1,000x slower or whatever. Um, and you know you can get up to 12 or 15 cores uh, on this board. So if you want to go ahead with census, you can go and check our GitHub and, and give that a shot. Um, the design itself here, um, you can see kind of what ends up on the Amazon FPGA in the end. And on the left-hand side, we've got the uh, open Python side of things. So this is the stuff that we contribute. So um, our system is the chip and the chipset, all the peripherals, all the cores, caches, and so on. Um, and then that connects to, we have this UR up here. Um, and so the UR 
uh, gives you a serial terminal, and we have a driver in Linux which will pull on that and give you a, a serial terminal that you can connect to. Um, in the middle, we have LEDs, switches, clock resets, etc. These are all virtual, which is an interesting thing. So normally, we just have an FPGA board in the desk, and you kind of flick the switches, you look at the LEDs, you're trying to figure out what's going on. But it's all virtual in F1. So in your terminal, you can open up, a, you can run a command, and it'll show you like a virtual LED like flickering, um, just kind of going from zero to one. Um, and then we've also got our uh, AWS crossbar here, which connects to the Axie interface um, for memory and for DMA. And so that's where the main memory is. Um, that's also where we put our kind of virtual SD card, um, comparable to the real SD card we have in our other FPGA designs. And you can really quickly DMA uh, onto that to start booting your OS. Uh, so in terms of booting the OS, um, the first step of this is that we have what we call a zero-stage bootloader. Um, this is really straightforward. Um, it's executing from the boot ROM, so it was compiled in when you uh, built your design or when we built the design that you use in F1. Um, and the thing it does here is kind of parse the GPT partition table in the SD card, grab that first partition, and dump that into memory. And so then that can contain uh, whichever bootloader you want to run or which other, uh, whichever other kind of uh, operating system or low-level firmware you want to run. And so... Uh, in our case, we're using VBL at the moment, and that, uh, that does some standard things like set the trap table, start SMP, um, and get things ready for Linux, so parsing the device tree and so on. Um, then, in our case, we're uh, producing uh, VBL blobs that have uh, Linux and, and build root environment uh, built in, and so that starts booting Linux. Um, it does all the driver loading from the device tree that's there and specified, so if you add a new peripheral, you add that to the device tree, then Linux will be able to pull that automatically. If you go between boards, Linux will know whether or not to load the driver for a particular device, depending on whether it's there. Um, and then uh, we finally get into our busy box environment. And so to get running, um, you can do the whole thing with basically four commands. So uh, you can load the image. This is the AGFI that we have available. Um, start up the UART and get your serial connection. Uh, and then DMA, whatever your operating system blob is, whatever you want to be on the, on the virtual SD card, um, you can DMA that on, and then just reset the FPGA, and it'll be going. So I'll show you a quick video here to give you an idea of what that looks like. Um, and thanks to my groupmate Grigori for doing this. So you can see here, first we load the image onto the FPGA. Only takes an instant. Uh, we DMA the operating system here. I'll note that that... Oh, oh is that just... Yeah, okay. Oh, no, the DMA only took like two seconds to copy two gigabytes. It's really great. I was just restarted for some reason. Um, and then you will open up your UART and then reset the FPGA. We just have a simple reset command that flicks the virtual, uh, sorry, clicks the virtual button. Um, and then we can open up our serial terminal. And by the time that we actually get the serial terminal opened, you'll see in a second, we've already run through um, the bootloaders and Linux is starting to boot. Um, and then we'll skip through in Linux boot here. Um, toward the end, uh, you can see standard Linux boot, standard driver bring up. We have a specific driver for our SD or virtual SD. And um, all this is really broadly unmodified. And once you log in, you can run you know, cat proxy PU info, and you can see that with the AGFI that we uploaded, you get nine uh, Linux capable Ariane cores. Um, and so from there, you can put other things in your builder environment. So the SDK that we use, um, you can check out that repo and use it really straightforwardly. You just either provide your own cross-compiler or it will build a cross-compiler for you um, and then just run make all and it will generate everything you need. Um, and so the components of that are there's the cross-compiler toolchain. Um, we have the modified version of BBL that we use. Uh, we have a build root environment. Um, build root is really great. It's been used a lot in the cloud, especially to provide small Linux images. And our friends at low risk have actually got to the point of having a full graphical environment running on Ariane using build root. Um, so you can have kind of mouse keyboard, uh, VGA, um, and it's all through build root, um, even before you have to go to the, go to the point of having a distro. Um, we also provide a rootfs overlay. So if you want to just bring along a binary that you built to run your application, so if you want to test scalability, something like that, um, you're not running a, a full distro, you can just copy this into the rootfs, and it will show up inside that file system that you were running um, on, on the F1 FPGA. And so that's extremely useful, too. Um, in terms of customization, if you have new drivers you want to add, if you want to change the config, maybe you want to I don't know, change the schedule or you want to add more debug information, um, you can do all that through build root in a really straightforward way. Um, and then you can kind of save that in and have your, your own configuration. You can even replace um, through the configs down here. You can replace 
uh, which Linux kernel you're grabbing, whether you want to grab an upstream one instead of the one that we have, or you want to make your own patches and so on. Um, and then on the right, in terms of build root and busybox, there's a really large number of packages um, that are available. Um, as I mentioned, you can have like a, basically a full GUI environment, but there's all sorts of things like databases and stuff like that out there um, that you can put uh, in build root. And so you can choose whatever applications you want, test that those work on Risk v uh, using OpenPTAN plus Ariane. Um, and this is like a really convenient environment. Um, now I'll talk a little bit about the things that we're still looking to do. So um, we are looking for assistance in making this a more usable and uh, better platform. Um, we're in the process of moving from BBL to OpenSBI uh, for firmware. Um, I've got that to the point of like entering an infinite loop somewhere that I need to debug. Uh, but we're, we're, we're in the process. Um, and so uh, OpenSBI is kind of becoming the standard there. Um, we're interested in other bootloaders um, for real bootloading. Um, as I mentioned, we have this environment where you've got the first partition on the card and it kind of copies stuff over um, into DRAM to uh, get running. We would like to actually use a real bootloader and have real drivers in the bootloader to uh, pull things off the SD card in a more elegant way. Um, we are in the process of doing distro bring up. So we have a Debian CH root environment. Um, in F1, so you can just kind of go in and ch root into Debian, and then you can run kind of whichever applications you want to run that will work without system deboot. Um, and so we've tested out all sorts of applications there. We can natively compile, we can do all sorts of other stuff. Um, but the bit that we're missing is getting the whole way through regular system deboot. Um, and, you know, uh, then you can actually have the full Debian environment. Um, we're also interested in other distros. Uh, we know that people have got Fedora and other things running. So um, if you work in another distro, we would love to see that uh, running on the platform. And you know, you can go on and uh, rent these FPGAs um, and give that a try yourselves. Um, and then the other thing is testing parallel software scalability. You know, you've got a bunch of cores available here. You can go on and see and start to make optimizations and understand. You know, if you have this kind of cache coherent many cores between Linux, um, what uh, optimizations can you make and so on. And so. We're interested from our perspective, but we also know there's a lot of applications out there that you might have that you want to see running on Risk Five and understand kind of what the benefits of Risk Five are. Um, and so, with that, I'm going to finish off. Uh, we have a variety of sponsors, ourselves and, and ETH, uh, to thank. But uh, most recently, uh, we received uh, some funding from Amazon. It turns out, if you're doing uh, research in uh, these sorts of open source platforms, Amazon is very willing to help fund uh, your. Uh, exploration on F1, so um, you can kind of put in requests and, and get funds from them that way. Um, and so I'd like to open up for any questions. Um, you can check out our websites, uh, pulpplatform.org and openpeton.org if you want to find more. Uh, we have a Google group. We are on GitHub. We will accept issues and so on. <laughs>